Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the verifying MacVerf isolated tenants external interconnect route leaking learning byte. All right, so here is our topology. There's a few things I want to point out. Now, keep in mind, this is the verification learning byte. There is a separate learning byte that goes through how to configure this. So we're just focusing on verifying. But I do want to go through the topology and what we are doing. So kind of understand why we're verifying it. All right. So in this topology, we have a few devices here. We have spine one, spine two, leaf one, and leaf two, which are all a part of the IP fabric in our data center. And the spine devices are obviously acting as the spines. The leaf devices are acting as the leafs. And then we have the gateway router that has connectivity to the internet that is connected to leaf two. And then we have host one and host three which are connected to leaf one. And some parameters for them is host one uses VLAN V10, IP address of 10.1.1.1 and VNI of 5020. Host three uses VLAN V20, IP of 10.1.2.3 and a VNI of 5020 as well. And so how do things connect together? Well, host one connects into uh, V10 verf, which is a Mac verf. And then the IRB interface, which is the layer three interface for host one, that is the default gateway for host one, that 10.1.1.254 address, that's the default gateway. And then that is in the V10 VR routing instance, which is a virtual router instance type. And then we have host three that connects into V20, which is a MacRF and uses IRB 20 as the layer three interface, well, the default gateway, which is then in the V20T5 routing instances, which is a just a, a, a VRF, that is a T5 uh, routing instance. And then we have the common T5 VRF, which is on leaf two, which is also a T5 routing instance, and which is just configured as a standard VRF routing instance. And that connects into the V20T5 VRF, as far as the VNI, and uh, the route target and things like that. So those two connect together through that. And then we've set up route leaking in the previous learning byte that leaks routes back, you know, between the V10 VR routing instance and the V20 T5 routing instance. And there's some static routes configured as well. And so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump to the CLI of leaf one and leaf two and get this going. All right, so here is leaf one. Well, actually, before we get going on leaf one, let's actually verify that we have connectivity with host one and host three. So host one, let's see if we can ping something on the internet and we can, that's fantastic. Let's see if we can ping host three. And great, we can ping host three. Now, something else I do want to point out here is that with this setup, host one isn't going out to the external router to get to host three that's happening all on leaf one. So keep that in mind. You may want that or you may not want that, but that's how this current setup does it. And so I'll ping just 8.8.8 .8 .8 and leave that running. And then let's see what we have here. Let's ping 8.8.8.8 .8 host three. That looks great. And so then let's ping host one from host three. And that's working perfect too. So great. We verified connectivity. That's really important. We don't have connectivity then we would have to go and change a few things because it definitely wouldn't be working. All right, so let's go to leaf three here and let's delve into this verification a little more. So first I look to look at the BGP summary command, look at the output there to kind of give an idea of what's going on. Uh, the first two BGP sessions are for the underlay so we can ignore that for our purposes. And then the next two sessions are the spine devices. The sessions we have for the spine devices, those are route reflectors. And so we can see what we're getting here. We can see the BGP EVPN.0 table has one active route. And then that active route is also present in the V20T5.EVPN.0 route table. So let's look at those routes. Let's look at the show route uh, table. Let's look at the V20 underscore T5. Actually, I need to specify table there. V20 underscore T5. And we can see here that we have some routes. Let's look at the the inet.0 table that's associated with that routing instance here. And you see a few things. First of all, 
we're getting a default route. Now, where is that default route coming from? That is coming from the gateway router that is advertising that default route to Leaf 2, then Leaf 2 advertises it to Leaf 1. And so that's how that's showing up, and it's an EVPN route. And we'll take a look at Leaf 2 to verify it from that perspective as well. Now, look at what we have here, the next route. This is the subnet associated with host 1, right? And how are we getting that into this route table? Because remember, host 1 is not connected to this MacVerf. And so recall from the configuration learning byte, we were doing route leaking. So that's how we're getting it in there. And then we can also look here and see that we have the subnet for host 3, which makes sense because that's connected to the V20 uh, MacVerf, which is then the layer 3 interface, which is IRB20 here, is in the, uh, the associated T5 routing instance. And so that looks good there. Okay, so what else are we getting here? Let's scroll down to the eVPN table. And we can see here that we have those eVPN routes that is associated with those INET routes that we were looking at. So we can see the subnet for host 1. That eVPN route is associated there. And then we see it for host 3, that subnet as well. And then that default route. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want to see. So then let's take a look at the route table for the v10 underscore vr inet and so forth tables and i guess it is just the inet table that is in here we need to look at since it isn't participating in evpn or anything right okay cool so what do we see here we see that static route that we configured and it's pointing to the v20 t5 dot inet dot zero route table right so that's how the traffic from host one is getting into the v20t5.inet.0 table and then getting to host 3 and getting to anything on the internet which is going through the gateway router. So it's important that that shows up like that. That looks good. All right, so then let's look at the, see what we're advertising to the Spine 1 device, which is one of the route reflectors. So show route advertising protocol, BGP, then the IP address or the, that is associated with the session. And then we can see the BGP eVPN table. And so that's going to have all the eVPN routes in it. And what we want to look at here is we want to look at the type 5 routes. You can see here that we are advertising the first we see here. We're advertising the route, the eVPN route, which is a type 5 route. You see that with the 5 here on the side. We are advertising that to the route reflector for the host 1 subnet. And then you can see what we're advertising here for the host three subnet, we are also advertising that to the route reflector. Perfect. That means that the route reflector is probably going to advertise that, reflect that to leaf two. So that's great. And so what else do we want to look at here? We look at the V20 T5 routing instance here at the bottom and you see the same thing here because the EVPN, the, the uh, what is that route table? The BGP.EVPN.0 route table just uh, aggregates all the EVPN routes, the BGP EVPN routes there. So we can see the same thing in the v20 t5 evpn.0 table. We see the route associated, the type 5 route that is, associated with host 1 subnet, and then the type 5 evpn route associated with the host 3 subnet. So perfect, that's what we wanted to see there. So let's go ahead and jump to leaf 2. And here in leaf 2, let's do the show bgp summary command. And you can see here that we are receiving two routes from the route reflector. And that's because we're advertising two routes from leaf one. And then the route reflector, which is spine one here, is reflecting those routes to leaf two. And so that's great. So let's look at the route table. Show route table and for the common T5 route table. And let's look at the INET route table here. We can see that we are getting a default route. And recall from the configuration learning byte that the BGP session is in the main routing instance, so we use route leaking to get that default route into the common t5.inet.0 route table. So that's why that's there. And then we have the two routes associated with the, or that represents the host1 and host3 subnets. That's here because we advertise those from leaf1 as type 5 eVPN routes. And so that looks good. And then if we scroll down, we can see the same routes in the eVPN table. That is the common t5.evpn.0 route table. And we can see here that this is the route for the host1 subnet. This is the route for the host2 subnet. And then we have the default route as well in that table.
That's perfect. That's exactly what we want to see. And so then with that, let's look at what we're advertising to the Spine 1 device. BGP, then 182.168.100.1, which is the loopback address for Spine 1. And you can see here we are advertising the default route in the BGP EVPN.0 and the common T5 EVPN.0 route tables. So that's perfect. It's type 5 route. We are advertising that. And that's how Leaf 1 is getting that default route. And then let's see what we're actually sending towards the gateway router. And you can see here that we are sending some, some routes that are associated with the loopback addresses. We could filter those out. It doesn't hurt anything to not filter them out, but we could do that. But the important thing is that we're sending the two routes that are associated and represents the host one and host three subnets. So perfect. And so then let's go to the gateway device. And here on the gateway device, we can do the show BGP summary. We can see here that we have one BGP session and we are receiving five routes. Perfect. And then let's do the show route protocol BGP. And you can see here that we are receiving those BGP routes. And most importantly, the routes that are associated with host one and host three. That's great. And then something else I want to show, since this is an SRX device that I'm using as the gateway router, we can look at the session flow table. That's really cool because we can see how things are happening. So we can do the show security flow session protocol ICMP since we're just doing a ping. And you can see something here. So what do we see here? We see 10.1.1.1. So that's host one going to 8.8.8. Perfect. And then host or the host of 8.8.8.8. Four eights there responding to this address. And the reason why you see this 172.25.11.31 is because source net is going on. And so don't worry about that. Just know that this is the flow and things are going good there. Now, notice how the rest of these are all for host one pinging out to 8.8.8.8. Recall that with host three, we left the ping running here. You can see this here, that is pinging 10.1.1.1. And so recall that earlier I said that host one is able to ping host three and host three is able to ping host one without going through the gateway uh, router. And so that is, might be something you want, might be something you don't want, but keep in mind, that's how that works there. And that is why we're not seeing that session that is coming from host three to host one on the gateway router, because it's not making it out to the gateway router. So keep that in mind if you are using this solution. So that does bring us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we demonstrate how to verify isolated tenants with an external interconnect and route leaking with MacVerf in a data center. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.